watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. A while ago I had this Alesis Micron on my channel for repair, but after repairing it successfully with the help of one of my viewers, I never made a proper video on that since. So today let's change that and try to find out what's special about this synthesizer from the early 2000s. Here we go. The Micron is an 8-voice polyphonic multi-timbro virtual analog synth. It has three oscillators per voice and can apply a wide range of synth techniques to your sound. Its user interface has two mod sliders, a pitch band wheel and three encoder knobs. All of those can be assigned functions with a fairly large modulation matrix. There's a full set of 5-pin MIDI sockets on the back, you can attach sustain and expression pedals, and there's also an audio input which is fed through the Micron's effects processor, which has a vocoder on offer besides a lot of other effects. Ok, let's take a quick look at the workflow of sound editing. Here's a blank patch. Now, the Micron has this neat user interface idea that makes moving around the menus a bit quicker. The keys on the keyboard act as a shortcut to certain menus, and there are labels on them to tell you where they lead you to. So for example, to edit this sound I can hold down the Programs button here and press the A4 key labeled Voice, and that takes me to the Voice Editor. The knob on the right can be turned and pressed to advance from menu to menu. Pressing the knob will let you select menus or parameters. The sound I want to create is a simple saw wave with a bandpass filter on it, with a modulator that translates velocity to filter cutter frequency so I can play an arpeggiated sequence and change the filter by hitting the keys harder. I'll just walk through these menus and stop and talk about the functions that I think are noteworthy or necessary for my patch, so I'll pass on portamento time and pitch wheel settings, but let's take a look at analog drift which emulates oscillators of old analog synthesizers drifting out of tune. This is a handy function for those slightly lo-fi 80s videotape styles of sound, and I'll go all in here so you can get an idea how that sounds. Ok, a value of 60% should be way too much and you'll hear that once we change the sine wave to saw wave, and uh, I'll skip oscillator sync and frequency modulation here because I don't need it for this sound, but uh, it's nice to know it's there. Next up is the waveform, so press the knob and turn it to see what's on offer. We have sine and pulse waves, including pulse width modulation, and there's a triangle and saw option and you can change the waveform from triangle to saw smoothly. Nice, let's keep that. I'll skip right past octave and transpose and pitch settings, and I'll adjust the pitch wheel range to 5 semitones. I'll change oscillator 2 to a saw wave as well for a fatter sound. Next we can adjust the oscillator level, so let's turn down oscillator 2 a bit and completely turn off oscillator 3. I also don't need ring modulation and I don't want that noise in my sound, so let's turn that off too. The external input is needed for the vocoder, and we don't need that now, but we'll take a look at it later. I'll also skip the effects section for now, but we'll take a look at the filters, as the Micron has a lot of filter types on offer. There's a comb filter here, which is nice, but as I said, I'll use a bandpass filter here. And as I assumed, I overdid the oscillator drift quite a bit, so let's reverse that. Next, let's adjust filter cutoff frequency. Just spin the knob until you get that menu. Now adjust filter resonance as well. Key tracking can stay as it is, but let's adjust the envelope strength a bit so the filter has some motion.
I'll skip the filter preamp, but let's check the overdrive. Now, I could apply a second filter here, but I don't need it for my sound, so let's skip it. Next up is the effects section, which I'm also not going to use today. So you can use up to two effects on each patch, and I'll quickly walk through some of them, and then I'll turn them off again. In order to hear the effects, we need to set the dry-wet ratio correctly first. Okay, but as I said, no effects. I also leave the amp envelopes as they are, but let's use envelope looping on the filter envelope. So the filter is using envelope 2 here, so I'll turn on looping and now we have this sound. And while we're here, let's turn on velocity sensitivity for the filter envelope, so the filter cutoff frequency changes ever so slightly depending on how hard we hit the key. Lastly, I'm going to add an entry to the modulation matrix so we can control filter cutoff frequency with one of the mod sliders. On the way there, it's worth noting that the LFOs on this synth can be synced to the tempo of your song. I won't use them here though. Okay, I want to control filter cutoff frequency with one of the mod sliders, or this encoder maybe, so press the button here and the source will be M slider 1, which uh, is the first mod slider. Now press the encoder once again, move to the next menu and select filter cutoff frequency as the destination. On the next screen set the level or the strength of the modulation and then go to the last menu and store this sound. And this is the result. Yep, and that was a quick walk through through the patch editor on this synth. If you want me to go more into detail in another video, please leave a comment. I'm going to continue with selecting a pad on the bass patch to record a short demo. Another great feature are the drum patterns. You can gather a group of synthesized drum sounds and play them on a track similar to the patterns I showed you before, which sounds somewhat like this. Once again, you can record drum patterns live or use the built-in step sequencer. And the best for last, you can gather drum tracks, patterns and patches into a so-called setup, which is a kind of sequencer which reacts to your keyboard input in real time, changing chords and bass lines as needed. You can assign keyboard zones to certain sounds and in this way make full use of the Micron's multi-timbrality. Let's also take a brief look at the pattern sequencer, which can be used as an arpeggiator. Here are two examples.
Once you've selected the pattern, press the pattern button once more and then turn the knob right for some steps until you get to this handy step editor here for creating your own patterns or changing existing ones. Patterns can be up to 4 bars long and they'll adapt to every key you play in. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more on the Alice's Micron and other synthesizers in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. Seeing the subscriber numbers grow makes me happy and keeps me motivated to push out new videos every week or so. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can head over to my Bandcamp page and buy some music, even if you don't like it, or you can just use the super thanks button down below. Thank you! Yeah, and that's it for today. Elise is Micron, an 8 voice synthesizer from the early 2000s. What do you think of it? Please comment down below. And if you found this useful or interesting or both, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like. This is YouTube, right? And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.